Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about inequalities in one triangle. So we're gonna start off with talking about angle side relationships. So it says here, if side AB is greater than side BC, so I'm just gonna mark this up on my diagram. So if this side AB, whatever that is, is greater than side BC, and maybe I'll go over that with blue. All right, so the red side is greater than the blue side. Then what we're gonna be able to say is that the measure of angle C, which I'm gonna mark up in red. This is what I need you to see. If a side AB is greater than side BC, then the angle opposite of side AB, which is angle C, is going to be greater than the angle opposite of side BC, which is angle A. Okay, so if you have a side of a triangle greater than the other side of the triangle, then the opposite angle is going to be greater than the other opposite angle. It goes hand in hand. And I can say uh, conversely that if I tell you that the measure of angle C is greater than the measure of angle A, like if I told you one angle was greater than another angle, then the side opposite those angles would have that same inequality statement. Whoops. Okay, so that's definitely going to be the main, main focus of today's lesson is this relationship here. So if I use that information to then list the angles from least to greatest, okay, and that's what I'm going to do here and then list the sides from greatest to least. So if I say list the angles from least to greatest, well, in this triangle ABC, I see I have three side lengths, 11.1, 14.3, and 15.7, and I don't have any of the angles marked up. But using this inequality situation here about a triangle, I can make an inference about the opposite angles. So if the smallest side here is side AB, it's only 11.1 units long, then the smallest angle would be the angle that's opposite from it, which is angle C. So angle C is definitely the smallest angle. Then the next smallest angle would be opposite the angle, the side rather, that's the next smallest, which is 14.3. So the angle opposite from 14.3 is angle A, which then means the greatest angle is opposite the greatest side of 15.7, which is angle B. So these would be the angles listed from least to greatest. Angle C, which is across from 11.1, angle A, which is across from 14.3, and angle B, which is across from 15.7. Now, the opposite idea. If I give you the angles, here I have angles 80, 45, and 55, and I then say list the sides from greatest to least. Well, the greatest side is going to be the side that's opposite from the greatest angle. So the greatest angle in this triangle is 80. So therefore, the greatest side is side EF, okay? Then the next greatest side would be the side opposite 55, which is DE. And then the last one would be the side opposite the 45 degrees, which is DF. So those would be the sides listed from greatest to least. Now this diagram here, it says which side is the largest and why? So here I actually have two triangles. I have one triangle of 40, 80, 60. I have another triangle of 50, 60, and 70. And I have to look at this carefully. Now, what I'm seeing is that, okay, well, if I want to find the largest side, I probably should find the largest angle. And the largest angle here is clearly 80. So if I look at this angle of 80, the side opposite of 80 is this AC. So right now it looks like AC, let me draw a better line than that. This AC looks like it should be definitely the longest side. But you know, in a problem like this, maybe that just seems like it's way too easy. But here's what I want you to notice. This side AC is definitely the largest side of this triangle here, right? If I look at this triangle here, it is most definitely the largest side because it's opposite the largest angle. But look at this side compared to this triangle here, ADC. Notice that this side is actually across from the 60 degree angle. And the 60 degree angle in that triangle is definitely not the greatest angle in that triangle ADC, 70 is. So this angle of 70 that opens up to side AD is actually the greatest. So it's kind of like saying, hey, 
you know, if you have a friend group and you're the oldest of that friend group, that's great. That's the 80 here. It's the oldest of this friend group. But then when you're also a part of a different friend group, you might not be the oldest in that one. You might actually be somewhere in the middle, which is exactly what happened here. So the largest side of this figure is actually AD. AC is the largest of ABC, but it's actually smaller than AD in triangle ACD. Okay, so this one definitely required a little bit more thought. Now the exterior angle inequality. We learned about the exterior angle theorem, where if I add the two remote interiors, so this angle plus this angle, remember if I add up the two remote interiors, they're going to actually add up to get angle one. So if I think about that, if I say, okay, well, we know the exterior angle theorem is if I take the two remote interiors and I add them up to get this exterior, then think about what that means by definition of the two remote interiors. What's the relationship between the remote interior and the exterior? If you're always adding up two remotes to get the exterior, then the two remote angles must always be less than whatever that exterior angle is. Because if you're adding them up, you're taking the sum, your value is always going to be greater because you're always dealing with positive numbers because angles are always positive. So the relationship I would be able to say here is that the measure of angle A is definitely less than the measure of angle one, and the measure of angle B is definitely less than the measure of angle one, since I have to add these up to get that exterior angle. So that is definitely um, you know, a situation that we have to look at very carefully. All right, let's take a look here. So this problem says we need to list all the angles that we know for a fact are less, uh, uh, less than the measure of angle one. So angle one, this angle here, we can clearly see is an exterior angle. So this angle one, I know for a fact, is made up of the sum of angles three plus four. So if I look at this, I've got all these little skinny triangles here, but then think about it. This exterior angle is made of the sum of angles three and four. So therefore, I know for a fact angle one, an angle that has to be less than angle one, is definitely angles three and angle four. Okay, and that's looking at this like first triangle here. It's the exterior of this triangle. But what I also should see is this angle one is actually also the exterior to this angle here. And if it's the exterior to that, then this entire angle plus this entire angle should also add up to one. Now look what that now includes. That now includes angles six and angle seven. Angles three plus six plus seven actually also add up to angle one. And using that same idea, if I look at the big triangle, then all of these angles plus angle 10 would have to add up to angle one, which means I can include in angles nine and 10. Now, we can't make any other judgments than what we just did using the remote interior angle um, theorem with the exterior angle inequality. We can't judge anything based on size. We can't say, hey, well, angle two looks like it's less than angle one. That's not the case. We have to go by the exterior angle. And the reason for that is, imagine I drew a figure and I drew a triangle that looks like this, okay? This exterior angle is the sum of these remote interiors. And look at that, if I like switch the way this diagram looks, this angle is definitely greater than this angle here, just by visually, but mathematically I don't know it for a fact. I don't have any measurements. All I know for a fact is that the two remote interiors add up to the exterior, and I have to go based on that. So we have to make sure that we don't look at angle two and say, well, it looks smaller than angle one, so I need to include it. And angle five looks smaller, and angle eight looks smaller. That's not how we can do any of these problems. We have to go based on the remote interiors. Okay, so now this problem here. Angles that are less than the measure of angle one. So this angle here. Again, I know nothing about angle eight, so I can't make any justification on that. But I do see that I have, if I have angle one, then that is equal to the sum of these remote interior angles, three, four, five, and six. 
So those two angles plus these two angles would be angles that I could say for a fact. I wouldn't be able to say anything for a fact about any of the other angles except for those. Because the, again, those are the two remote interior angles, which actually have two angles making them up. And then that's it. Okay. Now, this last problem here is definitely a bit of a doozy. Um, we're going to list all of the angles that we know for a fact are less than the measure of angle 15. So here I have angle 15. And there's definitely a lot going on here. Angle 15 is an exterior angle. So first off, I can see that, you know, angle 2 and angle 3 and angle four are definitely remote interiors because, you know, if this is my exterior angle, well, then these three angles would add up to that exterior angle. What I can also see is another mini triangle here of, well, angle four and angle 11 in this triangle here are actually also the remote interiors for 15. And then something else I would be able to say is, well, remember about vertical angles, right? So if angle 11 is definitely less than angle 15, well, angle 11 and 9 are identical to each other, right? They're vertical angles, so angle 9 is definitely less than angle 15. And I made that little note of why that's there. And then the last thing that we're going to be able to say, well, think about this. If 9 is less than 15, right? then anything that adds up to get to nine is also then less than angle 15, right? So if angle nine is less than the 15, then anything, then nine, we have to think about, well, what's nine bigger than, right? Because anything nine is bigger than is also gonna be less than that 15. And what we should see here actually, and this is a little sneaky, is angles six and seven are the remote interiors that add up to nine, and since six and seven add up to get nine and nine is less than 15, then six and seven must also be less than 15. So that can be a little tougher to see right from the beginning. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.